Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So I would like to thank Tim. Tim sent me a link to an IMF working paper, and I had mentioned this a couple of days ago, and I've had a chance to read a little bit more of this. I haven't gone through maybe about 25% of it now. And it's really not that long. I just need to sit down there and focus in on it because it's pretty complicated and a lot of stuff that they're talking about. But ultimately, in this IMF paper that was dated October of 2015, they are laying out pretty much the entire guideline for the central banks and the banking system out there to introduce an electric currency, an e-currency, a central bank digital currency. And, of course, they don't call it a central bank digital currency in this paper because it was dated from October 2015. I don't think the idea of a central bank digital currency had quite evolved into what we think of it as today. But it really does lead me to believe that the IMF had a lot more knowledge about Bitcoin and its introduction into, you know, its release to the world at the time than they are leading on to believe like you know they're trying to say that this is an anonymous thing that nobody knows quite who invented bitcoin and that you know it didn't have any kind of government involvement but i look at this imf paper and i think about it it's 2015 bitcoin was introduced in like 2009 and the first few years that bitcoin was was released, it wasn't very popular. I mean, not a whole lot of people were even using it. And like most people, you didn't even know what the hell it was. But yet, it was just a few years later that the IMF has a complete working paper on how it is that central banks can completely replace paper currency with a digital currency, or this e-currency as they were calling it. And I just have a feeling that the IMF must have known a lot more about cryptocurrencies at the time that, you know, that when this Bitcoin was, you know, released to the world, then they're leading on to, to say, I mean, it just it just seems that the, the timing is too close and this paper is too extensive. I could be wrong on that. I mean, you know, there you have a lot of smart people who might have studied Bitcoin for a year and was able to come up with this, you know, working paper the next year. Very possible. I just have a feeling that the IMF was a little bit more involved and they're leading on to believe or leading us to believe. But in this paper, just right at, towards the very beginning, I think it was, um, I think page seven or something on it, they talk about how it is that the governments or the banks can pull the paper currency out of the system. Because the whole idea of taking, of, of introducing an electric currency or an e-currency or a central bank digital currency is to bring in negative interest rates. Because as long as you have paper in the system, paper currency, then you're going to have a hard time introducing those negative interest rates. Now, they can do negative interest rates in the banking system, like up there at the central bank and the big banks and, you know, how they conduct business with each other. That's where a lot of people think about the negative interest rates is up there in that banking system. But negative interest rates can find its way all the way to the depositors. That means like you and me, when we put money in the bank in our checking account... Banks can apply, can at some point in the future, apply a negative interest rate to those accounts. And if that happens, you and me, we're going to be like, no way. And we're going to pull our money out and we're going to say, hey, we're just going to keep it in dollar bills instead of being faced with the negative interest rates from our deposits. Here's the thing. They already thought about that. And they used the word attack. Like when I think of attack, I think of fighting. I think the like, you know that you are going to meet resistance and that you are going to have to attack that situation, I mean fight, okay? And they use the word attack when it comes to dealing with this paper currency and how to uh, discourage people from, from withdrawing or depositing paper currency. And yes, they do a, say attack the, the, the deposits of paper currency. See, like we can understand that if they charge us an interest rate or a fee, for withdrawing currency, like uh, we, hey, I want to draw withdraw a hundred bucks. Okay, fine, but you're only going to get ninety five of it. Okay, so this would discourage people from withdrawing the cash out of the banking system. But then again, you can also say, hey, if you have cash, you're going to get charged a fee to deposit that cash. And so this would also force people to put money into the bank. You see how it kind of flows that way? It'll charge you for taking money out and then charge you for putting money back. And now this is what I find interesting about it is, is that some people might not see that going on and they'll take out a bunch of cash and then they start getting charged to put that cash back into the bank. But then what if they drop that fee? Like 
Here they wanted to get all the cash out of the system. They want to go a cashless society. They can't. There's too much cash still out there in the system. They apply this fee that you're going to get charged, uh, you know, in a certain amount to put your money back in the banking system. But yet it doesn't seem to take the currency out. Right. The, the, let's just say that the paper currency still flows through the system. Well, what if the banks came back up after having charging this fee and say, hey, you know what? For the next month. We're going to give you one-to-one, one E currency for every dollar. There's no more fee. How much of that paper currency would come flooding back into the bank if they were to do that? See, this is the attack that they're talking about. They're going to attack you in every way to keep you from being able to secure your wealth. They want you to have that money in the banking system and they don't want you having it saved in the banking system. They want you to pay, take it and invest it in the stock market or real estate or bonds or something, but they don't want you to try and save your money with this wealth. You know, hold on to the currency. They want you spending it. They want that money velocity taking place. And so they're going to use this attack of the paper currency in order to try and institute this cashless society. Once they have cash out of the system, now they can take interest rates into whatever territory they want because there's nothing that you can do about it. That's my opinion of what's happening here. But that's just the first, the, what I'm talking about is just the first few uh, pages inside of this IMF working paper. I'm going to leave a link down in the description for you guys. I'm going to try and read through most of it tonight. and Maybe we can do another video on it tomorrow. But I thought it was pretty interesting as far as the uh, their, their idea of pulling cash out of the system. Because they have hit that lower bound. The lower bound is zero, zero interest rates. And being able to go negative, take it under the, you know, break the lower bound as they as they call it. I mean, this whole idea has been in, in motion for five, six years now. And now that I think about it, it's probably been in motion since the day that they introduced Bitcoin to the globe. You know, the whole idea was to take cash out of the system and introduce negative interest rates. That's, I mean, all the other stuff that people talk about, like the tracking and control and all that other stuff... Yeah, I mean, that's part of it too, but that's not the big reason. The big reason is the negative interest rates. I mean, they can already churn off your bank. They can freeze up your accounts. They can, you know, take you to jail. They can do all kinds of stuff to you. They already track you through your phone and through your purchases and everything else like that. Introducing cryptocurrencies and using a, you know, like a blockchain type of technology to track all purchases is not going to be that big of a difference for the people out there because most people use their debit cards anyway they track all their you know they can track all the purchases as it is so for most people that's that whole you know tyrannical thing that that's not going to even be a concern you know where the concern is going to come in is being charged the negative interest rates on your bank accounts that's where people are going to freak out all right uneducated economist you guys let me know